Hey, everybody, it's Ken McElroy. Thanks for joining me with uh, fellow Rich Dad advisor, Garrett Sutton. And uh, as, as we know, we're talking about the real estate investing for the entrepreneur. And, and Garrett and I have uh, known each other a really long time. Uh, we are advisors for Robert Kiyosaki. Uh, Garrett's written many, many books. He speaks all over the world. And Garrett, welcome. Thank you, Ken. Pleasure to be with you. So let's jump right in. Let's let's talk about, you know, I love your two products, the book, the, you know, start your own corporation and, um, you know, run your own corporation, you know. You mean these? Yeah, those books. <laughs> yeah, let's let's talk about those because in those books, you talk about the best states that, you know, are uh, best to form a corporation or an LLC. And, and, and it, you know, this is a complex issue. And, and in my company, as you know, we have over a thousand accredited investors this question always comes up, you know, where do I, where do I put my corporation? Do I invest personally and all that? So let's, uh, why don't you, why don't we talk a little bit about that? All right, great. Well, the question, do I invest personally is a good one because when you do invest personally in real estate deals, uh, even if you have a, a brokerage account, if that account or the real estate investment is in your individual name, and you get sued in a car wreck, someone, uh, an attorney going after you could reach right in and take those assets from you. So you want to set up uh, these protective entities, corporations and LLCs to give you that limited liability protection. And so if someone invests in a syndication, uh, they could, you know, the syndication, let's say, is a Texas LLC. They can hold their LLC interest in their individual name. But a lot of our clients will set up a Wyoming LLC to hold their interest in the Texas LLC for just that extra layer of protection. Uh, there are various states that are good states. There are a lot of states that are weak states when it comes to asset protection. California, New York, Utah are weak states. We like the strong states, Delaware, Nevada, Wyoming. I really like Wyoming for the LLC. And so you want to be able to protect your assets and the, all 50 states allow you to set up LLCs and corporations. So uh, this is a way that people are able to move forward and be protected. So I'll give you an interesting story. And this is a true story. I, I had a president of my company. He was in California and he had rented a car and he had his girlfriend and her kids in the back and he ran a red light. And uh, it was his fault. He said, you know, the sun was in his eyes and he ran this red light and he got into a pretty bad accident. Now, luckily, nobody was killed, but um, some people were ejected from the car and the car was totaled, et cetera, et cetera. And um, boy, the turmoil that he went through for the next two years, because uh, unfortunately, you know, the, the people in the car actually had to sue him to get their medical bills paid. And he was completely exposed personally and he owned a fair amount of real estate. And I think what happens sometimes is people move along and they buy things in their own name and then they don't realize, you know, things like that can really right. happen. And boy, I'll tell you, it was a mess. Well, it, it can be a mess, especially if you own it in your individual name and you're right, Ken, so many people, when they're doing that transaction, it's just easier. I haven't set up the LLC. I'll just take title in my name. And then they forget to go back and form the LLC. And if you get in that car wreck and titles in your individual name, it's too late. You can't go back and use an LLC. You can't put a seatbelt on after the car wreck. So it's important for your listeners to understand that you have to take care of these things right at the start. If you haven't done it and haven't been sued, it's not too late to make take steps to correct it. But really, this has to be done right at the start because that car wreck can happen to anyone at any time. Yeah, it was uh, it was really an eye opener to me because, you know, you cruise along and you use your money, you know, you wire money from your bank account and you buy things, uh, you know, whatever they are, rental houses or and, and you don't realize how exposed you are. And and. Um, so what he obviously started doing was putting all of his assets into, you know, some kind of an entity after that. And, and so can you talk a little bit about, you know, cause some, you know, as you know, let's say somebody wants to just buy a, a rental house um, right. and they have it in their own name. What, what, what are the steps that they need to do uh, to get that into some kind of an entity? 
Well, we form the entity and to typically if the property's in Texas, we would form a Texas LLC. That's where the property is located. I like having the Texas LLC owned by a Wyoming LLC, which gives better asset protection. But then you mentioned the steps, Ken, and they're really important. People will set up the LLC and think they're done. No, you have to transfer title from your name into the name of the LLC. And in most states, there's no transfer tax for that. You're just transferring it from you to you. Uh, you have to tell the insurance company, though. We've had cases where the insurance company isn't notified that the title to the property is in the LLC, and they'll deny a claim on that. And so tell the insurance company, do you tell the bank or not uh, that you've tra transferred from your name into the LLC? That's a good question. Is it better to ask permission or forgiveness? Um, yeah, I've most always, banks are I've always asked for forgiveness. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, because this is not, you know, the, the loan is still personally yours. So it, you're not protecting yourself from the bank. You're actually protecting yourself from, you know, other people. Right. And so the bank has, still has the personal guarantee. They still have a first deed of trust on the property. Their position hasn't changed. And so it's called continuity of obligation. You still have an obligation to the bank. But as to all other people, including tenants, or car wreck victims, you have much better asset protection by having that real estate title in the name of an LLC. Right, so let's let's just break it down real quick. Let's say you own four rental properties and you suggest that each one should have their own LLC, correct? I do, but some of my clients would you put two properties into two separate LLCs. Okay. It's a judgment call. It's up to the client. But the best right. asset protection is one property per LLC. And the interesting thing is, is we're not talking about a lot of money here, right? Like, what does it cost to, I mean, to put, you know, I mean, your company does this. Where, where can people go to, to get more information on, on how to form an LLC and what the costs are? Well, uh, at corporatedirect.com is our website. And if you mention Rich Dad, it's only $595 to set up a corporation or an LLC, plus the state filing fees, which vary from state to state. So it's not expensive to set this up and beware of promoters out there charging you $2,000, $5,000 for an entity. It doesn't cost that much. Yeah, it doesn't. And I know, and I know we use you. We have a lot of entities through you. It's, and five, 595 is just the initial number. And then after that, you basically just have the filing fees every year, right? Right. So for example, with a Wyoming LLC, it's only $50 to the state of Wyoming. And then we have a resident agent office there in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, which is $125 a year. So for $175 a year, you look at this as another form of insurance. It's yeah. just another insurance policy. It is, it is. And and so, you know, we've had all kinds of horror stories inside of our properties, as you know. Like, you know, we, we unfortunately have had, um, you know, uh, accidents that, that do happen inside of there. And, and, you know, they always look for somewhere to sue typically, right? Or even we've right. had, we've had situations um, on the property. We had uh, slip and falls. Uh, you know, uh, we had a uh, property in Flagstaff where somebody slipped and fell and broke their femur, you know, and that stuff, that can stuff can turn pretty ugly. And, and, and what happens is they actually are not suing you personally. They are, they're suing the actual entity, right? Right. And so the, you're going to have an insurance policy. That's your first line of defense. And in a horrific case, the uh, tenant is suing the LLC that's on title to the property, but they're not suing Ken individually. Their claim is against that LLC. And so that's why we don't like to have 20 properties in one LLC because they could get the equity in all 20 properties. We do right. like to segregate assets. Right, right. And what, what people might not know is that, I mean, I know you don't, I have nothing in my personal name, not even my personal residence. And right. that's because in, in the case I was in the ex example I was talking about earlier, they went after this guy, every single thing that he had, he had a vacation home, he had a primary home, he had a bunch of real estate investments. And then he actually had some investments in some companies and they were all in his individual name. And so uh, they went after every single thing. Yeah, that's what happens. And so by having these LLCs, you discourage that kind of litigation. The Wyoming LLC is hard to get through. 
uh, you can get a, a lien on distributions, but you may not make any distributions. I always recommend also, Ken, that people have an umbrella policy of insurance. So, you know, with your car and auto, you can get that extra coverage through an umbrella policy, which for an extra million in coverage is only 400 a year. And so with enough insurance for the attorneys to get at, they tend to leave you alone on the LLC. So that's a really good point that, you know, we actually have an umbrella over all our properties. And, and actually what it does is it enables you to pay a lower price for your primary insurance policy and then buy an, buy an umbrella. Right, right. And so if they get past the umbrella, I mean, that has to be a, a massive case for them to get past the umbrella. Then the attorneys have to go after these Wyoming LLCs, which is not easy. Uh, we don't see many attorneys going after the, the Wyoming LLCs because they are, it's difficult to get the distributions out of them. So uh, the insur a combination of insurance and entities is a good way to go. Yeah, you know, you bring up a good point because in that, uh, again, going back to that example, what happened is my buddy uh, they, they got the, they blew right through the first million. His policy was a million. They blew right, right through it. If you think about it with the medical costs these days, they blew right through it. And then, then over that number, that's when they were going after him. So insurance did actually pay, uh, but it ran out and that's right. where that umbrella comes in. Right. Right. And if the insurance runs out, sometimes the defense, co uh, your defense costs run out too. And then you're responsible for defending the case uh, in, in some situations. That's not a good position to be in either. So a combination of insurance, have plenty of insurance, maybe enough insurance equal to your net worth, uh, and then have the entities to protect you as a second uh, line of defense. That's awesome, Garrett. So uh, before we wrap up this podcast, uh, where can people find you again? Well, our main website is corporatedirect.com. And if they call 800-600-1760, we offer a free 15-minute consult with a paralegal to see if we can help you. And so you can understand what our services are and our pricing and all. Okay, great. Yeah, because, so, you know, these these deals that, that uh, people are putting entities around, you know, we're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars. And for, you know, a couple hundred bucks a year, it's right. uh, it sure makes you sleep better at night. That's right. So uh, thanks, Garrett. I appreciate your insight on that very, very much. Good seeing you again. Good seeing you, Ken. Thanks. All right. See ya.